Hall broadcasting from the Hubcast Studios, fresh off a 6-3 victory for the Vancouver Canucks. I am Rob Fay, and welcome inside the nation as we bring you live, local, and interactive coverage of the Vancouver Canucks who snapped their six-game skid. How good does that feel? For Vancouver, and you know what? For Thatcher Demko, he finally gets a little bit of run support. It has been a 1-1-1, one, 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 no goal support, and then tonight the floodgates open, and boy, did they open early. Four shots, four goals. I don't see that very often. You know what? If you're an Edmonton Oilers fan, are you a little bit worried? I might be a little bit worried about the goaltending stitch as well. We're going to get into it tonight. We got one of the best in the city to break it down. Jeff Patterson, highly sought out. He's everywhere. But tonight he is here and we will have him in about 10 minutes time. Once we get through the trivia, once we break down this game, just giving you the box score and all the little details, we'll introduce you to our community champion as well. And we've got a great show for you. So let's get you to the trip. It is brought to you by our good friends at Logo Pro Sports. I have not even seen this question. You and I are going to get this at the same time. Logo Pro Sports, Kurt and all his friends, no matter how big, how small that project is, support local business. They got custom apparel and sportswear. And if you go to LogoProSports.com right now, click on the nation, you can get some of your swag. So even if you don't win this trivia, you can still wear the stuff that all the winners are wearing around town. All right, let's get to it. Who was the first ever European captain in Vancouver? That's a good question. Let me know, all right? Go into all the chat rooms, whether you're on Twitch, whether you're uh, watching tonight on YouTube, Facebook Live. I can see when you put down the correct answers, and I'll know who's going to be selected tonight, probably a minute or two before you do. But again, before this show is done, somebody's walking out of here with a little swag. All right, let's get to it. Let's recap this game tonight, because uh, as I look at my trusty clipboard, there is a lot to get to. This game recap brought to you by uh, our good friends at Move Health and Wellness. You're thinking, wow, Rob's got a lot of friends. I do. We got a bunch of people that have sponsored this show to keep us on air, and I thank you, each and every one of you guys, for doing it. Go to movehealthandwellness.com. Gary and TJ have been fantastic, great leadership, and more than anything in Surrey Central, if you want to get your mind, your body, your spirit ready and right coming out of this pandemic, that is where you want to enroll. Okay, nine goals in this game. I got to rattle this off. I think this might be the first time in a long time that we've seen three first goals of the season. First one was Hoaglander. It is his 10th of the season. Unsung hero for sure. There's no doubt about it. What we've seen this year from Nils Hoaglander, outstanding, plays hard, plays the game right. He got his 10th of the season. But how good does this feel? Jack Rathbone with his first. And, and by the way, I might say this. I tweeted this out about an hour, hour and a half ago. That guy, might be for the Canucks, might be somewhere else, is going to be a captain in the NHL before this is all said and done. I love the way that he handles himself. I love the way he plays. I know what you're thinking. Oh, cool. Good assessment after six periods of NHL hockey. But at the same time, he just loved leadership and he loved the way he speaks, the way he plays the game. He sees it well. I think there's going to be big things for Jack Rathbone. All right, so that made it 2-0. Uh, Travis Hamadick made it 3-0. It was his first of the season. Howard Luck made it 4-0. And then all of a sudden, the old heave-ho. I've never seen that in all of my years covering sports. Four goals, four shots, pull the goalie, thanks for coming out. And just like that, this looked like it was going to be a game on ice. But then the big boys for the Oilers decided to step up. Yep, Leon Dreisaitl, Polkonoma's 27th, Puglia Yarvi then chips in and it's a 4-2 game. But I, I was thinking to myself, I say the next goal is going to win this. If they can make it 4-3, Canucks are in trouble. But just when you thought that they were going to be in a little bit of trouble tonight because we've seen this movie before. Big goal. Uh, Gray Ovac makes it 5-2. A little bit of fight back and forth. Dry Sutter with his 28th, but then Brock Besser with his 20th goal of the season. That's a big deal. We talk about marketability of this team coming into next season. There's so much doom and gloom around this franchise right now. But it has a lot more to do with what's going on upstairs and what's what's going on in the ice. And to see Brock Besser in a truncated season already hit the 20-goal plateau, that's got to give you a lot of confidence going into the offseason that this core still has a lot to offer. Whether it's Bo Horvat, whether it's a healing and repairing, Elias Pettersson, Brock Besser with his 20th, JT Miller every once in a while chips in. There's still a lot there. Unfortunately, it's just been a season of, um, I guess you would say, hurdles as opposed to opportunities. But again, tonight, feel good, Vancouver. That is a very big victory for the boys. All right, before we go to our first commercial break, let us get you to our community champion. It is sponsored by Tim Hortons, who said to us a couple of weeks ago, they said, Rob, can you go out and find us some community champions, people that are doing great things in the community? I said, you know what? I'll leave this to the viewers of this fine show. And you guys answered the bell. You went to robfay.ca. You filled up the inbox with tremendous stories. Some of them I had to read twice. I was just 
is so blown away that it's happening in our community. And uh, our stop today is at Burnaby General Hospital. I, I think this goes without saying that all of our warriors throughout the Lower Mainland are usually residing uh, in our hospitals. What they're going through right now is crazy. People working double shifts, people doing stuff that they haven't done ever before, but they're just taking on responsibility wherever it lies. And uh, it was a real treat to go alongside with Tim Hortons for their For Good campaign and stop at Burnaby Hospital. Here's our community champion for tonight. It's the Tim's for Good campaign. And so what the Tim's for Good campaign is about is we're showing up to essential workers all across the province and all across Canada. And we're letting them know that we really appreciate all the hard work that they're putting in right now. We know it's not the easiest time, especially to be an essential worker. And so we wanna let them know that their hard work going above and beyond during the pandemic is really appreciated. So it's a big thank you from Tim Hortons to our essential workers. Oh my goodness, it was just amazing, really. Um, you just, you go to work, you do your job, you, you work hard, you support your teams, and you know, it was an amazing honor and such a, such a surprise. You know, everyone's been living this pandemic for so long. Um, what we're seeing at our area is that it's, it's ramping up now with more and more patients that are in critical care. So we are asked to go beyond what we normally do and just sort of stretching our resources. And, um, but everyone's really dedicated and working hard to get through this. And for our next broadcast, we will be in Coquitlam. We will let you know who our next community champion is during our next broadcast. All right, we'll take our break here. But before we do, very quickly, I want to say thanks to the Gaming Stadium for supporting us here and also for letting us know each and every night about our upcoming games. Yeah, Spiro and all the guys down at the Gaming Stadium. By the way, they are hiring right now at the Gaming Stadium. So go to thegamingstadium.com or find them on social media. They got a lot of really cool opportunities. So if you've got a kid or somebody who's graduating from high school to university that loves gaming, you might want to get in touch with them. Okay, only a handful of games left for the Vancouver Canucks, I might add. Let's take a look at what is on the old horizon for the good ship Vancouver. One more date against the Oilers. That is the Saturday night special. And then back to back, back to back, like Drake used to hum back in the days. Monday, Tuesday, they will take on the Jets of Winnipeg. And again, right now, Vancouver's not going to make it to the postseason. But they can wear down some teams that they can keep playing the way they did tonight. And uh, perhaps give teams that are making it to the postseason... Uh, a little bit of stress before they finally get to the other side. All right, on the other side of our show, we've got Jeff Patterson. We've got our trivia answer. We've got so much more, man. We have just scratched the surface on what should be a very good night. And don't forget, the Toyo Tires fan line is now officially open. If you want to interact with this show, if you want to let me know what you thought of tonight's 6-3 victory, there's the number. We've already tweeted that out into all of the different chat rooms. Or of course, we posted it, tweeted it, done all the stuff that you do in social media to make sure that you can be a part of this conversation tonight. All right, on the other side, Jeff Patterson of The Athletic joins me next. I am Rob Fay, and this is The Nation, brought to you as always by Chamber of Commerce Group Insurance Plan. We will be back in a moment. Your employees work hard, and some of your employees are working two jobs at once. Make double duty a little easier with Chambers Plan. On top of a full suite of employee benefits, all Chambers Plan health options come with Teladoc telemedicine services. A doctor can meet with you, write a prescription, and send it to your pharmacy of choice. Better benefits, stable rates, and a video call with a doctor who can confirm it's only a rash. This is what Canada's number one employee benefits plan looks like. A higher degree of safety. <laughs> Since 1945, Toyo Tires has been making quality products. It doesn't matter where you go or what you do. There's a Toyo adventure for those who dare to dream. 
Looks like those tires are well tested. Hey Matt, let's play! For your drive, dare to dream. Toyo Tires. Well, back inside the Hubcast studios, I am Rob Fain. Welcome back to The Nation, brought to you by Chamber of Commerce Group Insurance Plan. How good does it feel tonight, Vancouver? Be honest. I come here to the Hubcast studios after every loss and wear it alongside you, so I feel pretty good that we can have a great old conversation tonight. And again, just minutes from now from Jeff Patterson. Just one item of business before we get to JPAT. It is once again brought to you by Move Health and Wellness. Let us get you to the out-of-town scoreboard. Now, you know that we only focus on teams of the North Division. Only one game tonight outside of it, and it is the old uh, battle between Toronto and Montreal. Montreal, with a win tonight, would have been able to clinch that fourth and final playoff spot, but it is not meant to be Austin Matthews in this game recording his 40th goal of the season. I know that we sit here and we wax poetically about the dynamic duo in Edmonton, but that's pretty uh, impressive. And I know that we have a little Toronto bias where we don't like hearing it because TSN plays it 25 hours a day, but 40 goals in a truncated season is pretty impressive. You got to give where credit is due. I think that would prorate to 67 or 68 goals on the course of a regular 82 game season, which is uh, pretty extraordinary. All right, brought to you by dogpartners.ca. Valerie and her staff looking forward to seeing your dog where they can do a little training. It is the summer months. There is no better time to bring your pet to Valerie and her staff who have more than 20 years experience making sure that they can get the best out of your dog. So go to dogpartners.ca and check out what Valerie and her staff have waiting on the other side of the corner for you. Jeff Patterson is kind enough to join us. And Jay Pat, before this show even started, before the game even started, we were wondering where we were going to go, but we got plenty to get into. First and foremost, I love the gear. I love the kicks, the van cast. Great to see you, Jay Pat. What'd you make of tonight's game? I think Valerie might have to work with Miko Koskinen. He was a dog tonight. And look, <laughs> the, the Canucks nice. needed the Canucks needed a night like tonight, Rob. It, they've been dealt a tough hand the last six weeks. Everybody knows the story there. And quite frankly, I was worried. The the longer the losing streak went, I, I just wasn't sure if their spirit had been broken. They've been playing hard. Like, I think the Saturday game in Toronto, first 20 minutes, I think they were the better team on the ice. And then Austin Matthews took over. You saw McDavid earlier in the week, the four-point night. The Canucks, like, the try has been there. They're just, they're not a good enough team. They needed some breaks. And man, did they get them. What a wild start to the game uh, you know, it, for me, the, the very first goal, the Hoaglander goal, good for him. The rookie up to 10 on the season, double digits, a lot to like there. But the flyby by Yessi Pugliarvi, that just told me that he and the Oilers thought it was going to be easy. They had just beaten the Canucks twice, going away here in Vancouver. And he does the big swoop, but give Hoaglander credit, pulls the puck around him, picks his spot. And I, I can't say the floodgates open because it wasn't, like the Canucks were peppering Miko Koskinen with a bunch of shots, it was Hoaglander, and then it was Rathbone, and then it's Howerluck, and then it's, actually it was Hamannick, and then I lost track of the way the goals went in there. Uh, but four shots on four goals, and I, I posted the, the screen grab on Twitter. You may have seen, like Sportsnet couldn't keep up. I loved the fact that they had the Canucks with four goals and only three shots on the shot clock. So uh, the math didn't quite add up, but it added up perfectly for the Vancouver Canucks tonight. They needed a night like tonight. And again, with all that these guys have been through, you know, they're not going to win out from here. There will be more losses ahead, but man, they can uh, hold their heads high. Uh, enjoy the fact that uh, they got a few bounces to go their way. They chased the Oilers starter and uh, off to the races they went tonight. You know, I got to think that some so of the fan base at this point has stopped looking at the math and they're just starting to look at the future. And it's been really cool over the last couple of games to see Cole Lind and now we get a look at Jack Rathbone and they're producing, albeit moderately. What have you made about the young guys since their arrival here in Vancouver? 
Well, I liked Rathbone's debut the other night. It was 12 minutes. It was sheltered. They were at home. They could control his ice time and his matchups. But he had the two-on-one that he defended against McDavid and Dreisaitl, sort of his welcome to the NHL moment. He talked about it and laughed about it post-game. Rob, the goal tonight, like, I just love the instincts. This is a guy in his fourth period in the National Hockey League jumping up when he saw an opportunity. I think a lot of guys would have thought, man, my job is to defend here. I'm going to back off and play it safe. No playing it safe for Jack Rathbone. He saw an opportunity, he pounced on it, he seized it and made the most of it, and you saw the celebration. You know what it meant for him. Uh, you know, I, I'm not ready to go down uh, your road of him being a captain just yet. <laughs> not writing him off by any stretch. Uh, he's got a lot of hockey ahead of him. But I will say this. He is a smart guy. He's a Harvard guy. Like, he's got the IQ on and off the ice. And again, I think he read a situation beautifully, reacted, and made the most of it. And I just, I, you know, I, I've seen this guy at a couple of Rookie camps with the Canucks. I was lucky enough to see him play for Harvard in Boston uh, the night before the Canucks played the Bruins last year. Saw him in game action there. Uh, his skating is, you know, it's already at an NHL level. For a, a young guy, he's going to be 22 this month. Uh, so, you know, he can skate. He can play the modern game. He's got the mobility. And, you know, I think we're just scratching the surface with the offense. He went down to Utica. He had nine points in eight games. You know, those are the first eight games he played as a professional. It's not the NHL, but it's close. And he was a point-of-game guy there. Now he comes up and he scores in his second game. He's got 10, game, 10 points in 10 games as a, pro a professional. And I love the fact that he's got three goals. Like, you know, this is a guy that thinks offense. He can back it up. And you saw it tonight with a pretty good shot. So uh, two nights and two pretty stellar performances, I think uh, you'd have to say, for Jack Rathbone. Keep serving it up. Travis Green said this morning after the morning skate, the plan is to play him a bunch of games and then sit him down. And some people may say, what? Like, And I don't think this is a bad strategy. They got the back-to-backs in Winnipeg coming up. I would imagine that Rathbone gets to play against Saturday. But, you know, maybe he takes one of those games in Winnipeg out. They want to get Ole Levy back in the lineup. And Travis Green said the plan would be play him a bunch, build up a body of work that the coaching staff could then sit him down, go over, work on video and some film, you know, let him watch a game from the press box again just to get a sense of life in the National Hockey League. I don't think that's a terrible plan for Jack Rathbone, but uh, make no mistake, this guy has arrived, and uh, it's going to be fun to watch him play for a bunch of years in Canuck Colors. You know, I love it because you know, the baseball I analogy is you take a pitcher out sometimes a little early and the fans get all pissed off because they want to see him go longer, longer, longer. But you want to keep that confidence high. And if he can put together four or five good games for the Canucks, I love that concept. So I think that works out great. The reason I tweeted that out, Jeff, is I've been so enamored with how he is in front of the camera, how well-spoken he is, how he handles himself. There's little nuances beyond what his analytic are on the ice that I have just completely been enamored with since he's arrived. So, yeah, maybe a little early to the party on the assessment that one day he'll be a captain in the NHL but again just love his presence since he has come to Vancouver let's talk about what's going to happen with this Vancouver Canuck team over the last couple of stretches because we've talked about Rathbone we've talked about the kids I don't know how many more wins and losses we're going to have but what can they accomplish in the final half dozen games here is there something that we can look at as a fan base to keep our interest beyond just watching the kids is there a storyline that you're still tracking well, Brock Besser took one away because I, I wanted to see him get to 20. Well, he's there. There's eight games to go. 25 is not out of the question. We've seen that he's a streaky scorer. He's scored in bunches already this year. I think he's got four two-goal games. Boy, if he could get anywhere close to 25 in this shortened season, uh, what a bounce-back year for Brock Besser. Uh, he was my mid-season MVP here on this very program, and I think he's in the discussion for the season MVP He'd gone a little cold without his running mate and his buddy, Elias Pettersson. The goals weren't there for a little while, but he scored in three straight here, all these games against the Edmonton Oilers. And 20 is, a, you know, for a guy that had 16 last year uh, before COVID hit, to get back to 20 in a shortened season like this one, uh, that's a really good news story. So it's nice to see him get the pop back uh, on his uh, stick and put the puck in the net. You know, tonight's was a little bit of garbage time, but whatever. They all count and... Uh, uh, I'm not going to take that uh, or hold that against Brock Besser in any way. So 25 is probably reaching, but again, eight games to go. And those games against Calgary at the end, like who knows what those games are going to look like. You know, there might be a chance for him to pounce and, and feast there. So uh, Brock Besser watched certainly more of Rathbone when he's in the lineup. You know, Cole Lind, I'm sure, is uh, watching Rathbone and thinking, hey, you made that look easy. I want my first in the National Hockey League, and maybe it'll come here before the end of the season. He continues to get good opportunities on a line with Horvat and Pearson. Uh, Jonah Gadjevich is serving his quarantine. He's going to meet the team in Winnipeg. They'll insert him in the lineup. That's something to watch as well. And 
again, these guys are professionals. Like, you know, it, it can't be easy getting up in the morning and knowing that these games ultimately don't mean an awful lot in the standings. But you know what the alternative is to having no games or to having games that mean nothing? It's no games. And that's going to happen here in about two weeks' time. So uh, these guys are hockey players. They want to play. And, you know, again, I go back to what we saw here in a couple of recent games where they just got outmatched and better players on the other team took over with Austin Matthews and Connor McDavid. So that's why I say I, I feel good for the Vancouver Canucks. I'm not here to cheer for them and, you know, get excited about the results at this stage of the season. But I didn't want to see and watch this group flush this season and, you know, have a six game losing streak turn into double digits. And before you know it, uh, you know, you're looking at playing out the string with a, a, a victory here. Travis Green didn't want that on his resume. The players certainly didn't want any part of that. The franchise record for consecutive losses is 10. They were at six tonight, and I was a little concerned. Again, just, you know, wondered if their spirit had been broken. So, uh, you know, let's see how hard they play. Uh, there are guys that are playing for jobs uh, on this team or in the league uh, next season, expansion, Seattle, and all those types of things. So, you know, it was just nice to see that, uh, yeah, they got a couple of bounces. They took advantage of uh, shoddy goaltending. But at the end of the day, there you know there wasn't any quit in the Vancouver Canucks tonight, and and we should point out, Rob, in a 6-3 win where we're talking about you know unlikely goal scores. Look, Thatcher Demko did his part too. He looked a lot like March Thatcher Demko tonight. Stares down McDavid on the penalty shot. I know the Oilers got three, but I heard you right off the top, and I'm with you, man. If they had got their third when it was four to two and applied a little pressure, leaned on the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, I, it would have been interesting to see where this game would have gone, but uh, the Canucks give Demko some run support. Uh, but I thought he did his part as well, particularly at 4-2 to two, to make sure that the Oilers didn't creep any closer in this hockey game. So we fall in love with some of these young guys, and maybe some of them make it to the main roster next year. Some of them are going to have to go back to the farm. Let's talk about the farm, because today... Francesco gets the rubber stamp from the Board of Governors. They will be in Abbotsford next year, which for a fan base, I think is pretty cool because then if you want to see Jonah Gajevich or insert player's name that's on the bubble, you don't have to simply read about it online. You can physically drive Highway 1 and go see it for yourself. I know that there were people speculating where this was going to end up, but now that we know that it's Abbotsford, let's talk about some of the benefits for the Vancouver Canucks here. What do you see as maybe some of the biggest benefits to having your farm team just down Highway 1? Yeah, and when I was on a couple of weeks ago and you asked me the question, and, and I, I thought California, sort of in the cluster of all the other California teams, made the most sense, but now that it's Abbotsford, I'm all in. I, I, I like this. And moving it west was the right idea. It was long overdue, and it was just a question of where. Now we know. It's Abbotsford. And when you talk about benefits, I, I think there are many, and at various levels. Obviously, on ice, you have... You know, you can watch over your farm team an hour away. Jim Benning or whoever's running the Vancouver Canucks, short drive out, they can watch the farm. You know, it wasn't easy to get to Utica. And so there's benefits from a management perspective. You can send your skills coach, your goaltending coach uh, down the highway to work with your prospects. Again, something that they weren't able to do right now unless you sent a guy and he actually made a trip into Utica. But uh, this can be a day trip. You know, you could go out work at a morning skate or at a practice and be back in Vancouver if the Canucks are playing that night. So, you know, there's lots of benefits in that way. And then, of course, off the ice, the branding, the opportunities on the marketing side to create some synergy uh, up Highway 1 from downtown all the way into the Fraser Valley. And then you look at things just like supplies. Like you, you, you want to buy blue and green tape? Now you can buy it in bulk and you can spread the wealth, whether it's these Canucks using it, you know, the, the guys out. No, but seriously, I mean, on the business side, I think that there are some cost opportunities uh, for the hockey club. Uh, so it really, you know, it goes from on high all the way down. And then, of course, you know, if you need to call a guy up and both teams are at home, uh, it makes it pretty easy that a guy could wake up in the morning, get the phone call that he's needed for the morning skate, and then he's going to play that night. And instead of having to jump on a bunch of planes and transfer at O'Hare in Chicago and run the risk of missing flights and getting in late and all that kind of stuff, you know, logistics are just so much easier. And so, yeah, I, I think it's a win-win. And, uh, you know, since the news broke the other night just ahead of the game that this was what was likely to happen pending the, the league's uh, approval today, uh, you know, it just it felt like the right idea. And it's kind of cool after all these years that the Canucks are going to have their farmhands truly in their backyard. I had four people reach out to me and ask if they think they should apply for the play-by-play -play job for that gig. That is a 
very coveted job now that, of course, it's associated with the Canucks. I'll leave those four calls nameless, but it's amazing to me how quickly people gravitated to this opportunity now that it's in their backyard. Jay Pat, let's talk about the NHL really quickly. Let's broaden the horizon here. Austin Matthews tonight in a victory for the Leafs gets his 40th of the season. I know we always look at Toronto through glasses that maybe don't make them look as good as they are, but it is a good hockey team. And tonight, Austin Matthews really solidifying himself as one of the game's elite. 40 goals in a truncated season. Not easy to do. What are your thoughts on the Leafs right now? And is Austin Matthews, if you were to put him side by side amongst the game's elite, is he running right with them? Is he a little ahead, a little behind? Where would you rank him? Well, I go back to, you know, the Canucks saw him on the weekend. They saw him twice, uh, Thursday and Saturday. He's, he's just making goal scoring look so easy right now. And that was sort of my takeaway when I watched him. Now, I know the Canucks <laughs> maybe not the best defense in the National Hockey League, but he's doing it against everybody in this Canadian division, uh, sparing no opponents. So, yeah, I mean, it's been fun to watch anytime a guy is on a run like Austin Matthews is. And I go back to what I said five minutes ago. Brock Besser is having a heck of a season for the Vancouver Canucks. He has 20 goals. Austin Matthews has twice as many. Like, it's incredible. So, uh, good for Austin Matthews. Uh, you know, we'll see. I mean, so many people think that, you know, none of this really matters because of the least playoff history. And there is an element of that, that great, great regular seasons, we've seen it before from the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, push is going to come to shove here pretty quickly. And I think tonight was a message. I mean, if they draw the Montreal Canadiens in the first round, you know, they wanted to serve notice to the Habs that uh, they meant business and they got out to a quick lead tonight. So, uh, I, I wouldn't think that Toronto would have too much difficulty with the Montreal Canadiens if, in fact, that's a first-round matchup, four out of seven. And then after that, uh, you know, we'll see who would come out of the other matchup, Edmonton and Winnipeg. The Jets are kind of struggling right now. And, you know, you saw the Oilers tonight, but McDavid still picks up his three points. So, you know, what a cool season. Uh, maybe it speaks to the division and the defenses that both McDavid and Matthews are facing, that here's one guy that's doing, you know, historic things on the point side in, in Connor McDavid and Austin Matthews up to 40 goals, and they've all come against you know, Canadian opponents. So there probably is something to that, whatever the case. Uh, these guys are getting the job done. You can't take those numbers away from them. And I'm all in on McDavid watch. Up to 96, he had his three points tonight. Couldn't add uh, with the penalty shot late there. But 96, uh, he's got a couple more games against the Vancouver Canucks, and he's going to get to 100. I mean, he's just on such a run of offense right now. So, um, you know, these guys are starting to kind of crank things up again for playoff time, and we'll see if they can carry it over from the regular season to the postseason where, you know, it's all about matchups. It's the same opponents. It's the same opponents making adjustments and, uh, you know, night after night after night. So it's not easy to put up big numbers in the playoffs, but uh, uh, the way that McDavid and Matthews are both going, uh, you know, I hope that they get a chance to go head-to-head -head because uh, I think that would be good for the game and good for the audience, even if you don't have a... Uh, a horse in that race uh, just to be able to watch two of the best in the National Hockey League go at it in postseason hockey I think would be a ton of fun so sign me up I uh, certainly would be among the viewers that would check out a McDavid Matthews battle in the playoffs all right very quickly I'm going to go into the inbox for your last question Jay Pat a lot of people want your assessment on the fallout in New York now there's a couple of layers to this onion in the fact that obviously the Tom Wilson thing is on its own. And then all of a sudden you have the Rangers going out on social media and basically chastising the NHL and the Department of Player Safety. And then you see the firings of both John Davidson, I mean, the GM and the president get axed. You wonder about the timing of it all. But now that everything's starting to settle down, what did you make of that whole situation? Who's at fault and who's to blame? Oh, well, there's a lot to digest there, certainly on the Rangers side. I mean, we think that the Canucks are a fairly dysfunctional unit on a lot of nights. And, and then you see the Rangers and the kind of week that they had. I think the league swung and missed. I, I do think that there was an opportunity to put some cold water on that whole situation. Had they suspended Tom Wilson, kept him out of that game yesterday. Uh, again, I, I look at the, the title of Department of Player Safety, and it just feels like the safety of almost every player around the league is disregarded and they only focus on one guy and that is usually the perpetrator uh, that probably deserved uh, a little bit more in the way of discipline a five thousand dollar fine you know it looks laughable on the outside i think we saw tom wilson sort of laughing about it and not a surprise that uh, you know the rangers stepping out with the comment that they made uh, certainly we don't see that sort of thing very often but uh, they were frustrated i understand that and then to see the way that game unfolded took me back to uh, the torts here and uh, the, that January game between the Canucks and the Flames, obviously. So uh, I wasn't surprised that there was that kind of response from the New York Rangers. I'm not going to get worked up about it. I know that there was a lot said and a lot written about how bad this is for the game. 
look, the NHL has survived worse. The NHL will be just fine. Business picked up. We talked about great players and some of the great stories exist. So uh, it's a physical game, and the Rangers felt that that was an appropriate response. They're done with the Capitals now. Uh, their season is almost over. You saw tonight that they got shut out by Boston. It didn't surprise me that uh, they had nothing left in the tank. Uh, you know, pretty emotional 24, 48 hours for the New York Rangers. So uh, I, I like what the Rangers have in the way of the young talent that they're assembling there. I thought that Jeff Gordon was doing a pretty good job. Clearly, ownership had other designs. And it'll be interesting to see what Chris Curry can do now. Come in, do the exit meetings, get a better read on the locker room, perhaps. But uh, keep an eye on the on the Rangers. I mean, they've won the lottery the last couple of years to get Lafreniere and to get uh, Capo Caco. You know, they're assembling some incredible young talent. I think you're going to hear from the New York Rangers in years to come. Apparently not quickly enough for their ownership group. But, uh, man, what a couple of days in the Big Apple for the Rangers and the National Hockey League. All right, Jeff, people want to know about the shirt. They want to know where yeah. they can get it. They want to know how you got it. Walk me through the VanCast t-shirt. Everybody's asking about it. All right. Well, there's a pretty good story that uh, my daughter in her graphic design class took it upon herself to create a VanCast shirt. So this was one of a kind for quite some time. Uh, there is a second one that exists because I don't do it alone. So Drance needed uh, one of his, you know, one for himself. So my daughter went back to uh, graphic design and it's not just the front. I got to turn around here to make sure. Can we see the, oh, the full get logo? out? I love it. Yes. So <laughs> this was uh, a grade 12 graphic design class. Uh, my daughter, Caitlin, full credit for it. They are not available. They're not for sale uh, at this point. I should say at this point, we'll see. We may have to get a little creative, set up a little pop-up merch stand uh, somewhere along the line. Uh, but uh, for now, I have one, Drance has one, and my daughter gets all the credit. I know a guy that if you ever want to do <laughs> mass, you let me know. <laughs> Gee, Pat, thanks for this. I know we're on limited um, you know, opportunity here with the season winding down, but everything you've done for this show has been so great, and I can't wait to do it a few more times with you. So, Jay, Pat, thank you for tonight. I'm with you. We'll uh, do it again next week. I look forward to it. There he is, Jeff Patterson of the VanCast and The Athletic. We'll take our break here. When we come back, let us go back to Rexall Place. Or is it Rogers? I don't even know what they play in Edmonton. Let's go to the arena on the other side of the mountains and get some feedback from the Vancouver Canucks, who might be jovial. I cannot wait to see what Travis Green is going to be like tonight. Will he walk in like a young Conor McGregor with the arms swaying like this? Or will he just sit there and be stoic and answer the questions and scoff at people? 50-50, who knows? But it's a good night, Vancouver. 6-3 victory over the Edmonton Oilers. We will take a break when we come back. Canuck reaction, trivia winners, and much more. This is The Nation. I am Rob Fay, and this show is always brought to you by Chamber of Commerce Group Insurance Plan. I will be back in a moment. When you're responsible for every little detail, here's one thing that you don't have to worry about. Your Chambers Plan employee benefits. The rates stay manageable and predictable because more than 30,000 Canadian businesses are pooled in the plan. And you never have to compromise on benefits and extra features for you and your staff. Better benefits, stable rates, and a chance to relax, at least for an hour. This is what Canada's number one employee benefits plan looks like. A higher degree of safety. <laughs> Since 1945, Toyo Tires has been making quality products. It doesn't matter where you go or what you do. There's a Toyo adventure for those who dare to dream. Looks like those tires are well tested. Hey Matt, let's play! For your drive, dare to dream. Toyo Tires.
in the Hubcast Studios, I am Rob Faye. Welcome back to the Nation Final segment. And uh, before we get to the rest of the show, we've got Travis Green, got a little Travis Hamannick, we've got Jack Rathbone, Thatcher Demko coming your way. Uh, we just wanted to acknowledge one of our sponsors who has been doing great things for us right from the very first show that we did, Savvy Singh and his real estate corporation have been such a great partner to us. We just wanted to point them out specifically tonight for all that they do for this show. This is a crazy time right now with so much real estate going left, right, and center. You could be sitting on a gold mine. You might be sitting on something you should keep sitting on as far as just, you know, you see everybody else selling. Maybe they're making a little bit of money. You think, oh, I got to get in on this. You need somebody with a proven track record to let you know if it's time to pull the trigger on that or if it's time to sit on your asset. So please make sure that you reach out to Savvy Singh over the course of the next couple of weeks. He'll at least give you an assessment. We've listed with him and it has been world class. I can't tell you how nice it is having uh, a friend do business for you and represent you with your best interest at heart. So to Savvy, uh, on behalf of everybody here at Hubcast Studios, thank you for supporting this nation, and uh, hopefully we get to support you back. All right, very quickly, let's go and open up the Toyo Tires fan line. If you want to interact with the show tonight, you know you can do that. I will leave this phone number up for a couple of moments, and uh, tonight we are looking for all takers. If you want to come into the station and talk about the Edmonton Oilers, the Toronto Maple Leafs, your thoughts on the New York Rangers situation, or anything to do with tonight's Canuck game, that is the number. I will get out of the way and let you take a look at it. What you do is you dial up that number. It's going to ask you for that little Zoom ID code. You just punch that bad boy in. It's already in all of the chat rooms right now, so all you got to do is click that button, and you're in here having a conversation with me. And uh, again, you know how it goes, no different than when I was doing Rob Fay Nation Radio. You call, I stop what I'm doing, and we will do that interaction thing. All right, let's get to it. Back over on the other side of the mountains in Edmonton, a 6-3 victory. I am expecting big energy from these players. Big energy! We'll start you with a tandem. Tonight, Thatcher Demko sat at the podium alongside the guy with his first NHL goal tonight, Jack Rathbone. Hey guys, uh, I'll start with you, Thatcher. Just what does it mean to you guys after the way things have gone of late to find a way to win a hockey game tonight? Yeah, it's uh, it's nice. It's uh, been a tough little stretch here, um, you know, dealing with uh, a handful of things. But um, you know, our group hasn't made any, any excuses. We understand the situation we're in, and we want to keep winning uh, as many games as we can. And um, you know, to come out and have the start that we did tonight was huge. Um, tons of guys contributing, you know, Bonesy gets his first one, kind of gets the boys going, um, even more so. So, uh, it was a good win, you know, good 60 minutes. Obviously they, they made a push, uh, a couple times there and we're trying to get back in the game and, and I thought we handled it well. And Jack, uh, your first NHL game the other night, your first NHL goal tonight, just, uh, talk us through the play and what are the emotions you're feeling coming off of not just your first goal, but you know, your first win with the Canucks as well. Yeah, it was, uh, it was kind of a little bit of a broken play. I was coming into the zone pretty late and how he, uh, how he was able to get a shot off. And luckily the puck was kind of just sitting there in the slot for me. Um, and lucky enough, it went in. Um, yeah, I think getting the Ws, um, a great feeling, especially on top of being able to contribute. So um, just really happy with the, the effort from the guys. We'll go next to Ian McIntyre. Not sure how satisfying is this for you tonight? I know that you've struggled a little bit in some of your recent games to get back in the W. Uh, yeah, it's good to always, you know, winning is always the, the better feeling of the two. So, um, like I said, you know, we just got to stick with it here and, um, you know, bow through some stuff. And, and I think our group's okay doing that, you know, doing our best, putting our best put, foot forward. And, um, you know, hopefully we can string a couple more together down the stretch here. And uh, for Jack, correct me if I didn't hear Thatcher correctly when he said Bonesy. Uh, had, is that uh, Quinn Hughes brought that uh, here or is that, uh, all, have you always been Bonesy? Yeah, I think I've, uh, that, that was kind of passed down honestly from my dad, but uh, no, I think it's, uh, Huggy's been calling me that and it's kind of just stuck so far. Next up, we'll Dude, did you see Josh. Thatcher Demko wanting to get in on that question so bad? So, yeah, you know how hockey players, they've all got names for each other. Bonesy is awesome, by the way. But that, I, I don't know, maybe it's because the question was asked. You could tell Thatcher. Uh, you know what? I wonder, can we play that last question back? I'm sorry, Adam. The guys in the back, if there's any way we could replay that last question, just let me know if we can or not. If we can, 
There's no doubt about it. You got to watch Thatcher. It's like a guy waiting in the wrestling ring for a tag from his partner. I love that kind of stuff. I don't know if you wanted to protect him. What do you want to do? Maybe we'll play it a little bit later, but uh, God, I, I love that they're a tightly knit fraternity. We, there's a lot of things that go on with the Canucks that we don't know about. Watch this. So here comes the question again. Watch Thatcher. That, uh, here or is that, uh, all, have you always been bonesy? <laughs> yeah, I think I've, uh, that, that was kind of passed down, honestly, from my dad. But uh, no, I think it's uh, how he's been calling. He's me. so itching to get in on that. I feel like there's a backstory to that. And Ian's such a straight, dry question asker. So, you know, <laughs> gotta love that kind of stuff. It's a little subtle thing, but if you see it, you appreciate it. Okay, onward and upward. I feel like you found, if you had an H on your last name, you were on the scoring sheet tonight. What did we get? Howerluck, Hoaglander, and uh, Hamadick. It's not bad. Triple H. Ah, there's so many ways I could go with this one. Okay, let's. <laughs> time to, uh, anyways, I die to sing that song. You know the theme to Triple H? Time to play the game? Uh, okay. All right, let's go back to Edmonton. Here is Travis Hamadick. Hey, Travis, just uh, what does this win mean to this group after everything you guys have gone through over the last few weeks here and struggling to find results? Yeah, I think it was important, um, you know, just to you know, hear the music after the game and, and uh, smile and, and uh, just kind of enjoy it. I thought, you know, we, we probably needed a win like this. And uh, it's fun. You, you got to, you know, as the season grinds along, it's never going to go necessarily the way you think or you want, but uh, you got to kind of slow things down and enjoy uh, the wins when they come your way and then reset tomorrow. But uh, it felt good. And I felt like we'd been kind of grinding for a little bit the last couple and it was nice to get one. How about for you personally to chip in a bit offensively and finish the night with the Gordy Howe hat trick as well? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you just want to do your part. Um, you know, you, you want to kind of find your role in the team and, and, and try and help and, and chip in. And uh, it was nice to see when, nice to see when, uh, Go in. It's my mom's birthday actually today, so I know she doesn't like when I fight too much, but uh, uh, you know she'll be happy about the goal for sure. Next up is Ian McIntyre. What's your mom's name? Lisa. Uh, Lisa. Do you take pride in a, a Gordy Howe hat trick? Not many uh, guys get one. Yeah. You uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. This will be my spent. It's been a while since I've had another one, but. Uh, um, yeah, you know, I, I don't know. I, I try to play the game hard and, and, uh, um, you know, obviously I don't score too many goals. And so when you get an assist right away and then you score right away, pretty much right after you, maybe it's in the back of their mind a little bit. And, uh, um, you know, obviously I, I, I clip Alex with that hit and, uh, you know, he wanted to go and, and I certainly wasn't, uh, not, not going to stand up for myself. And, um, yeah, those Probably things back, you know, when when you're retired and you're older and kids are looking through your stuff, you see a stick or a puck or something from a Gordy. That's uh, it's always kind of fun. And just because we love we it, I love that they still acknowledge a Gordy Howe hat trick. And what's funny if you listen to that, he gets the assist, he gets a goal, and right away he's like, "Yeah, I got one more check mark here." Not that he was looking for it, but the fact that he found it. It's not a bad night. It's not a bad night at the office. Are right, you guys ready for this? You guys ready over here for this? I am expecting nothing but straight velocity out of this next clip. We go back to Edmonton for the buzzsaw himself. We go back for the high energy of the head coach on a 6-3 victory night. Here is Travis Green. Hit me. Hey, Travis, how much does this win tonight mean to the guys in that room and to you guys behind the bench after what you've been through the last couple of weeks? That was important. Um, you, you know, we've been trying to stay confident or keep our group confident. Uh, be honest with them. We're doing a lot of teaching on the fly here without any practice time with a lot, with so many new players in our lineup, especially up front. Um, and I think they have been working extremely hard and competing hard. Uh, we've had a couple games where some top end guys have really taken over the game on the other team uh, and not getting results. But you, anytime you can, you're talking to a team and trying to teach and, and keep them confident, uh, getting a win goes a long way. And I, and I think tonight was an important win for our group. How nice was it to see Jack Rathbone score his first goal in just his second game? And what have you made of the young man's play? Yeah, for a it's awesome to see. Um, anytime you see a, a player scores first NH NHL goal, it's something that you never forget. Um, you'll always remember it. 
and uh, it's a special night. Uh, he's had two in a row now where he plays his first game and then he scores in his second game. Uh, the team was excited. I'm, I'm sure he's he's thrilled and I'm sure his family is too and rightfully so. Next up, we'll go to Farhan Lalji. <clears throat> Travis, can I ask you about the decision to go back to back with Thatcher and, and just that thought of trying to get him going again and, and just how he played tonight? I think you nailed it. Um, you know, there, there is a lot of hockey. We're going to use both goalies here, but um, kind of want to just go back to Denver and, and, and get him in a groove and we'll, and we'll reassess tomorrow what we do from here. But I thought he was good tonight again. Come on, man. I set the table for you. I made it easy for you. It's a 6-3 victory. We don't get a lot of these wins around here right now. Come on, man. Oh, God. You know what? I got to be honest, man. This, this is my friend. Brent is my friend, but come on, dude. Hey, what you think about the game tonight? Nah, what do you think? We won 6-3. Next. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Throw me a curveball every once in a while. I'm ready to go. All right. That's the uh, stuff from the other side of the mountains. Canucks win 6-3 tonight. It was a good night. It felt good, didn't it? Six losses in a row doesn't feel good. So all of a sudden, you got goal on your first shot, goal on your second shot, goal on your third shot. Say it with me, Vancouver. Goal on your fourth shot. And all of a sudden, just like that, Vancouver walks away with a 6-3 victory. Oh, God, that stuff on the uh, podium drives me nuts, man. I wish somebody... You know what? I'm okay with the, uh, the Hamannick stuff. He, he gets a solid B+. Plus. A little bit of energy there. One time I would... You know, have we had Nate Schmidt for the last little while? Nate Schmidt's great behind the mic. We could have used a little Nate in our life tonight. I'm not sure where he was, but uh, anyways. Okay, want to give away some swag? I do. I'm ready to go. So are the guys at LogoProSports.com. Let us bring you our question du jour, if you will, with European connotations. Who was the first ever European captain in Vancouver Canuck history? Say it with me, everybody. The correct answer is... Is... Ah, there we go. Marcus Naslin. Isn't that something? Got to wait all the way till 2000 before you can get that. Nazi was a heck of a captain. One of my favorites. Winner tonight, René Gallia. That's a great name. And by the way, shout out to the graphics department for the little accent there. That's a nice touch at the end of the night. Local Pro Sports, little order, big order, anything in between. Make sure that you're supporting local business. This is a great company. Whether you got a small project, maybe you got a stag or something once you guys finally get back together and you're going to make your funny shirts before you get on the plane or maybe you got a big project. You want to take it to somebody who you trust. Logo Pro Sports, Jeff Patterson. You know where I'd send you. If you ever want to do big things with that Van Cash shirt, you let me know. Okay, Vancouver Canucks with a 6-3 victory. We'll put a wrap on this show tonight. My thanks to Jeff Patterson of the VanCast and The Athletic. Great night. And more than anything, thank you for your interaction. Thank you for checking in. Uh, one of our largest viewerships that we've had in some time tonight. Winning brings all the boys to the yard. It's not just milkshakes, everybody. All right, we will be back on Saturday. I look forward to that. Shot's the best. Uh, we will be back on Saturday. One more dance against the oil before all of a sudden we get jiggy with the Jets. This season is running out of games. Let's get together a few more times, you and I. And uh, again, thank you for checking in. I am Rob Fay. My thanks to everybody in the truck back on the other side here from Hubcast Media. Peter Young and his staff, thank you for a great job to you watching tonight. Thank you. And don't forget, right after the show, we podcast it. So if you want to watch it tomorrow, absolutely. But if you just want to listen on your commute in, I got you. We got a little Spotify and iTunes thing going for you as well. Until we do this again on Saturday, I am Rob Fay, and this has been The Nation. Brought to you by Chamber of Commerce Group Insurance Plan. Good night, everybody. See you Saturday.